Hello, I'm Troy Kirby and welcome to Legislative Review. The Associated Press's 2020 Legislative Preview kicked off January 9th with a panel of Senate and House leadership. New to the panel was Lori Jenkins, the House Speaker Designate, who highlighted climate change and the initiative 976 as top priorities for the legislature. This is the AP Legislative Preview. Thank you all for joining us today. The Associated Press's 2020 Legislative Preview kicked off January 9th with a panel of Senate and House leadership. New to the panel was Democrat and uh, House Speaker designate Lori Jenkins, who highlighted climate change and Initiative 976 as the top priorities for the legislature. But I think we're still um, continuing to want to press forward on addressing climate change. Uh, my brother is a smoke jumper who runs the Boise smoke jumping station and he is in Australia right now fighting fires and uh, so I, it's very, it's both personal to me and uh, important to our caucus and I think, you know, I can't not mention 976 and addressing the implications of 976 and especially its implications for um, folks who are most vulnerable. Her counterpart, House Republican leader J.T. Wilcox, also identified I-976 as a top issue for the chamber. The transportation is critical uh, all over the state and so is the will of the people and uh, upholding uh, the things that the voters have clearly communicated are important to them. Senate Majority Leader Andy Billig said that the discussion on I-976 needs to consider all transportation services. We talk so much about these hundreds of millions and billions of dollars and the constitutional challenge and it's important to remember we're talking about people and there is an article in the spokesman review about uh, Louise uh, from Garfield County which I think is Senator Schessler's district and she's 96 years old she uses that transit in Garfield County to get to to get her food to get to the doctor to play bingo and she said she's gonna be housebound if these cuts go through and I you know, and that's just one person. There's also the state patrol that keeps us all safe and the snow plowing on Snoqualmie Pass and the really important projects like in my district um, that are important for jobs. So we need to balance all of that and then report prioritize. Republican Senate leader Mark Schessler said that his caucus would be focused on listening to the taxpayers. We've had advisory votes for a long time and not a lot of comment from the public. Getting 12 advisory votes resonated with the public of how many of these taxes are we getting? <clears throat> that doesn't include 976. And it doesn't include, you know, there was three that were fairly innocuous that uh, were bipartisan, but nine of 12, the voters said no to. The voters said they wanted 976. Beyond tax measures, the legislature will consider what to do about House Representative Matt Shea, who was found by an independent legislative investigation to have helped support elements of domestic terrorism in connection with lands activist Eamon Bundy. The House Republican Caucus took immediate action and uh, we applied all of the sanctions that were available to us uh, immediately. Um, there are many sanctions that uh, can be applied by the majority if uh, they choose to do that. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's an appetite on their part to express their displeasure. House Republican leader J.T. Wilcox expelled Shea from all caucus activities and services, including committee assignments. Well, I want to make it plain first, he's not a House Republican. Uh, he has uh, been uh, suspended from the House Republican Caucus. Uh, he has no official contacts with us. And so, uh, no, we don't tolerate uh, the allegations that are contained in the investigation, and we made that very plain immediately. Wilcox felt that full investigative expulsion would mean that Representative Shea would have to be convicted first. Well, I could uh, easily imagine that uh, after a conviction, absolutely, and in the one time in the, I think, 130-year uh, history of the state of Washington uh, that there's been an expulsion, that followed a conviction. House Speaker-designate Lori Jenkins was blunt about what Representative Shea should do. Matt Shea should resign, and if he does not resign, he should be expelled. While Shea has generally not responded to requests for comment, he has stated that he will not resign. 
and has said that he considers the investigation to be illegitimate, that he was not afforded due process. Another hot topic for the legislature is the practice of title-only bills, which are bills without much detail, passed on less than 20 minutes notice, such as budget and tax bills during the 2019 legislature. House Speaker-designate Lori Jenkins didn't recognize title-only bills as an issue, despite concerns from the minority parties in both chambers and the media about transparency. There actually isn't such thing as a title-only bill. I mean, every bill has a title, and then it has some description about what it's about. I guess maybe the argument is how much substance you have to have about that. In, I mean, in, a, well, in a bill? Yeah, because well, I mean, every just, year during budgets, I mean, we've all yeah, lived but through every, that where we see we don't see the chunk of the, the meat of the bill right. until 20 minutes after it's been announced. And so is there a way to, to, to modify that process so that there's more transparency on the budget yeah. process? So, I mean, I think that's the point. Uh, I think that to me that's the perspective, Rachel, is about trying to have as much transparency and trying to increase transparency around this. But... Uh, <clears throat> I think one of the challenges I have is, again, in the House, at least, we, don't, we have a title and then you have some substance. The substance might not represent what the entire bill is in the end, but it does give notice about what, what's being discussed. And then the, then the issue becomes having hearings and making sure that there's time uh, for consideration of a bill. Republican Senate leader Mark Schessler said that the practice has been used by both chambers, by every party, but is outdated and advocated for title-only bills to go away. I've seen all four corners of the legislature use this procedure in what will be my 28th session. But turn the clock back to when I came here 28 years ago. Uh, Drafting was very slow, very cumbersome. Communications were somewhat slower than they are today. And plead guilty, as majority we did it, as did the current majority. But I, I think with the tools available today, it's no longer necessary. A challenge for legislative leadership will also be how to deal with homelessness. Senate Majority Leader Andy Billig said that the matter needed to be addressed in the 2020 short session of 60 days and that Governor Inslee has recognized the emergency of homelessness across the state needs to be addressed immediately. He's recognized that this is an emergency and we need a very significant response and that's what he proposed. I think that's leadership for us to put, for, it's leadership for him to put that marker out there and I think we've got the next 60 days to figure out a way to deliver for the people of Washington and not just for those that are homeless but for the whole community because it affects, it affects everybody because there are so many people who aren't homeless but who are just one medical bill, one missed rent payment away from being homeless. And so we need to solve this for, for the whole state. Wilcox felt that the response is beyond just a one-time solution of using money out of the state's rainy day fund in order to combat complex issues of homelessness. It is about creating more community beyond legislation. If you have a natural disaster, the community comes together and uh, everybody creates stronger human bonds. Um, we certainly have a, a crisis of, uh, of capacity here uh, that doesn't show up overnight. And without addressing the things that make people so alone and so um, susceptible to addiction, mental illness, so many of the things that surround this problem, um, even the National Guard I don't think would accomplish much. The topic of homelessness well, was expanded with a panel of Seattle lawmakers, including police officer and legislator Morgan Irwin, who shared his insight into the issues of homelessness. Homelessness is not one thing, but it's, it's an umbrella term, and there's lots of reasons that people end up there. And when we're talking about root causes of homelessness and we're talking about mental health, which we made huge strives in last year uh, in terms of you know, funding a state mental health hospital uh, or a training hospital and trying to get more beds out there, um, that's one piece. Then we have the addiction services side, and then we have you know, a lack of housing in general. Um, and I think a lot of people have pointed to the, the near impossibility of bringing in new units, especially units that are focused on um, low income, um, into various 
different cities. Representative Nicole Macri felt that the discussion of adding more housing hasn't translated enough into effective, affordable housing. So we know building housing alone does not address homelessness. In fact, m the vast majority, um, I think over 90% of those units have been um, higher uh, um, built with rents at the higher end of the spectrum. So building housing supply alone is not a quick fix. Senator Hans Ziegler felt that Governor Inslee's proposed plan to combat homelessness would be financially reckless and would instead recommend prioritization of the budget. I don't know why the governor is talking about dipping into the rainy day fund when we are when we have a significant surplus in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, and, and we can prioritize within that. I mean, that, that is a nice situation to be in, to be able to spend uh, significant new money in addition to what we budgeted last year. Uh, and we can prioritize, I believe what we need to prioritize within that money is behavioral health, which we uh, did a lot of work, a lot of good work on a bipartisan basis last session. Uh, but I think as we make those continued investments in behavioral health in our workforce, in community mental health programs, in uh, getting Western State on track and, and on and on, um, I, I think we're going to make a significant difference on that adult, cr chronically homeless adult population um, and uh, getting resources and help that folks need who are out on our streets. Senator Patty Cooter said that it has been a resource, not a relationship issue, that has hindered organizations from helping reduce homelessness populations in Washington state. One of the things that I heard loud and clear from those organizations doing this work is that they don't have operational funds. We are good at giving capital funding to get a building built. We're not so good about helping them staff it. I very much appreciate that. Uh, good morning, this is a great day. The Associated Press then held a discussion with Governor Inslee, who laid out his priorities for the 2020 legislative session, which centered on the crisis of homelessness and his goal to eliminate half of the homeless population living on the streets by 2022. This is a statewide uh, uh, crisis and it calls for a statewide solution. The proposal I'm putting forth this year is ambitious. We want to have a goal of reducing the number of people who are living outside by 50% in two years. Inslee pointed out that homelessness was a complex issue, ranging from mental health to job insecurity. There are many causes of homelessness. People with challenges with mental health, people with challenges of chemical addiction problems, people who have not developed job skills people that are kind of broken when it comes to getting back in the job market. And there are people who are economically displaced because rents are growing much faster in our state uh, than wages. Inslee then defended his proposal to use $300 million from the Rainy Day Fund to support efforts to eliminate homelessness. The Rainy Day Fund is for when it's raining, and it's raining physically on people outside today. The method of this proposal, I, I think, is fiscally prudent because it's a relatively small percentage of the rainy day fund. The rainy day fund actually will continue to grow even with this uh, outlier or investment that I'm proposing. The rainy day fund would continue to grow. That's an important point. We're not diminishing the rainy day fund. It's going to keep getting bigger even with this small uh, investment. Asked what representative Matt Shea should do Inslee said that he was disturbed by what he called a thorough investigation. It is very difficult for me to understand how he could effectively represent the people of Spokane County uh, now that he has been thrown out of the, the caucus, he has been denied committee membership, he is a disabled uh, member, and I think they need a full-time, functioning, effective person who's not a domestic terrorist. So yes, he should resign. And I'm happy to talk to legislators about their plans if he does not do so. Inslee concluded his conference with an assessment of Initiative 976, which passed in November by a public vote, but is being reviewed by the state's Supreme Court on its validity to be enacted. Some legislators have suggested that sales tax from car sales should be positioned to make up transportation differences should I-976 be fully enacted. Now, it is clear there is very wide desire for reform of the car tab program. 
It is also clear that we have unmet needs in our transportation system. And the result of that initiative, should it be upheld by the court, will mean there will be a multi-billion dollar hole in our transportation budget. And we will have to find some way to deal with that. Uh, but we'll need to work with the legislature. We need to get judicial guidance on what actually is going to happen with that initiative. I've done what I believe is the fiscally responsible thing, which is to make sure that money's in escrow in case the court uh, upholds it. We have also uh, been forced to put on pause some of the projects that were otherwise going to go forward to make sure that there's enough money to take care for the disabled who need bus service, to make sure we don't cut ferry service dramatically and we don't cut bus service and we don't cut light rail service. So we've had to tighten our belts under sort of the assumption that this thing would take place. That concludes this special episode of Legislative Review, with next week's opening sessions starting at noon on January 13th with opening ceremonies in the House and Senate. But you can join TVW starting at 10 a.m. Monday when we'll have interviews with legislative leaders live from the Capitol Rotunda. We'll see you then.